All right, let's look at, at an example of relative rates of effusion or diffusion or Newton square speed for two gases. And um, let's in, in extend that idea to the time it takes, the relative uh, amount of time it takes for a gas to effuse or diffuse as a process and uh, see where that takes us. So in this example, we have a, a little effusion cell uh, that, that is of the volume mapped out here by this little cube. And it has a tiny little orifice here where the gas is allowed to um, seep through. And so we would call that effusion. So it's not simply the process of mixing of two gases, um, say, for example, in the air or in, the, in a room but it is the process of the gas molecules exiting through this tiny hole. Um, I can give you an idea of where this might occur. For example, um, let's say that a porous, the, the, the very porous membrane of, uh, of a balloon, a regular balloon, you know that if you, uh, if you use a regular balloon with helium gas, it, um, it works well for only so long and in a matter of hours the balloon is, is sinking as the helium is escaping um, because the uh, the balloon skin the uh, distance between the particles and the balloon skin basically is is uh, not close enough to hinder the permeation of the helium gas because helium is so tiny so Imagine a fusion of a gas happening one molecule at a time. That's how small the hole has to be. So that's why we always say the tiny orifice or the tiny hole. And um, this is uh, occurring at a given temperature and pressure. So again, in this example, um, and um, let's show the rest of this here. In this example, we are told that two experiments two um, runs of an experiment are performed. And in the first case, a known volume of nitrogen gas is effusing through this tiny hole um, at this temperature and pressure. And the time it takes for a known volume to effuse is 1 minute 24 seconds. Okay, So instead of using stopwatch time, we either have to convert that to minutes or seconds. So we'll just do that in our head. It's 60 and 24 or 84 seconds. In the second case, I have an unknown gas, but I have exactly the same volume at the same temperature and pressure. So sometimes in questions, we see this described as effusing under the same conditions, the exact same conditions. So that's important that our only variable here really is the nature of the gas. Um, and basically, that's its molar mass. And so a known and same volume of unknown gas is doing the same effusion, but this one is taking, um, this gas takes 1 minute and 43 seconds, or 103 seconds. And so we're asked to find what is the molar mass of this unknown gas. So we're going to compare the time it takes for the effusion to occur. So what we've shown in class is, um, and, and let's just show this whole thing and, and go through the answer. So. Um, that's what I'm asked to find. We'll um, disclose the, uh, the solution in a moment, the, or the final answer in a moment. Um, but what I know about if, how effusion relates to molar mass, um, and we've derived this in class, is that uh, the rate of effusion is uh, indirectly proportional to the, the square root of its molar mass. And so if I compare and we create this ratio of the rate of effusion of nitrogen over the rate of effusion of the unknown gas, that's equal to the ratio of the molar mass of the unknown to its square root over the molar mass of nitrogen gas to the square root. And what's important to note here is that I have this uh, inverse relationship between the rate of effusion of a gas and the square root of its molar mass. But in this question, I am given the time it takes for the effusion process to occur. And now I see that the ratio of the square root of the molar masses is actually directly proportional to the ratio of the time it takes to effuse. So what you'll notice different on this side 
is that the time to refuse for the unknown gas is written at the same level here as the molar square root of the molar mass of the unknown, and the time to refuse for nitrogen the same, okay? So that they are now directly proportional, whereas the effusion rates are indirectly proportional to the square root of the molar mass. The reason for this is, if you think about the rate of effusion compared to the time it takes to effuse, and related to driving a car, um, the greater the speed of the car, the shorter the time it would take to arrive at the destination. Therefore, the greater the rate of effusion, the smaller the value of time. So there, the rate of effusion, or speed, and time are, yeah, indirectly related. So we just focus on this here. So again, if in a question you are given the relative rates of effusion, you would set up this expression. But here we are given the relative times to effuse, and so we're going to set up this expression. We focus on here. I want to identify a value for the mass of the unknown. And so I'll isolate the square root of the molar mass for the unknown gas, and that is equal to the molar mass of nitrogen, square root, times the ratio of the times to effuse unknown over nitrogen. Um, substituting in the values here, uh, let's scoop that up. substituting in the values, we have written the molar mass of nitrogen in terms of kilograms per mole. However, because I am not substituting a capital M into an equation uh, for mu RMS, for example, 3RT over M, it's not necessary that the mass be in kilograms per mole, or SI units per mass, um, because um, it's in isolation here, or it's, it's actually a ratio. So, so long as I understand the same units are given for both. So I could have left this as grams per mole, but out of convention, um, consistency, I guess, capital M using kilograms per mole. Does it matter what I choose for the units for the time to refuse? Um, well, no, it could have been hours both hours, both minutes, or both seconds, but not stopwatch time. So we converted both of them to seconds because they're going to cancel anyway and produce the same ratio. So that ratio was 1.226. Um, the square root of this number is 0 0.20519. So that is uh, 0.20519 is the square of the molar mass of the unknown gas, uh, square root, sorry, and so if I square that number, I will get the answer in kilograms per mole, and then multiplying it by 1,000, I get my answer in grams per mole. So the molar mass of the unknown gas is 42.1 grams per mole.